Good morning, guys. Happy Monday. It's April 23rd, 2018. You're watching The Daily Mix TV by Hill Story Marketing. Hey, guys. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. Yesterday was Earth Day. Talk about a beautiful day in the Northeast. But interestingly enough, did you notice that there were a lot less brands celebrating Earth Day this year? I can't remember a time when I didn't see massive amounts of retail marketing celebrating Earth Day and protecting the environment. Yesterday, however, was an anomaly. Now, this is just an indicator that spending is soft on brand promo for non-major holidays. So what does that mean? It means that retailers and brands are being very smart about how they're spending their money, and specifically their marketing dollars. So to not see that much promo in store and frankly, not a lot online either, is disconcerting, to say the least. Now, speaking of spending and marketing, is brick and mortar really dead? Well, according to what's happening right now in the world of Amazon, the answer is no. Now, Best Buy and Amazon have saddled up together. They announced a partnership last week to sell smart televisions in Best Buy stores that run on Amazon's Fire TV operating system. Now, Best Buy said... It's going to sell more than 10 high-def and 4K Amazon televisions in stores and online this summer from consumer electronics giant Toshiba and Insignia, which is the house brand for Best Buy. The TVs will be branded Fire TVs, the same name Amazon uses for its streaming set-top boxes. Now, Best Buy and Amazon did not say how much these TVs will cost or what size offerings in terms of the screen Toshiba and Insignia will be selling. Now, the companies did say in a press release that the TVs will offer streaming services from Amazon's own Prime Video, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, PlayStation View, as well as live broadcast and cable networks. Now, the Fire TVs can also be paired with Amazon's Echo Smart Speaker so people can use the Alexa Voice Assistant as a hands-free remote. Now, interestingly enough... Uh, last week, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos boasted that the new TVs will, quote, deliver beautiful visuals and all the movies and TV shows you love with an experience that gets better every day with Alexa. Now, the move is also just the latest example of how Amazon is looking at retail. They recognize that consumers still prefer to buy things like big televisions in actual stores. Now, they started to open their own physical stores throughout the country with their Amazon bookstore platform and their uh, new test concept, Amazon Go. More importantly, they bought Grocer Whole Foods last year as well. It's an interesting time in retail, to say the very least. You have so many that are blaming the Amazon effect for their woes, yet Amazon is investing money back into retail. Now, the curtain can come down any day on Movie Pass's bumpy run as an independent company. So their majority owner, which is Helios and Matheson Analytics, they're looking at a potential merger with the all-you-can-eat movie subscription plan, according to a regulatory filing last week. Helios is able to make the move without the consent of the Movie Pass board because its ownership stake is at 91.8%. That's over the 90% threshold that you need for a unilateral move. Now, this was a Friday late night filing by the company. So that tells me that there's something more going on in the background. Now, if this proceeds, Helio said it would structure the merger such that MoviePass would become a wholly owned subsidiary. Now, the regulatory filing also pulled back the curtain on just how much cash MoviePass is burning through. In March, Helios, led by Chief Executive Ted Farnsworth, forgave $55.5 million in cash advances to MoviePass over two months, ending February 20th, in exchange for stock that expands its stake to 81.2% from 62.4%. Now, additional advances of $35 million to support MoviePass's cash-burning business model, which initially offered subscribers a movie a day for just under eight bucks a month. Now that took Helios past the 90% threshold this past month. MoviePass has pulled back from its generous original offer. A newcomer today must pay $29.85 for three months, which buys only four monthly movies and a trial of iHeartRadio All Access. 
Now, an announcement of a possible MoviePass takeover ended a roller coaster week for Helios' shares. They jumped uh, 6% in June after Verizon announced a 9% passive stake. They topped out at just under $5 per share on April 17th, only to close at $2.27 on April 20th as investors weighed a secondary offering of $30 million to feed its MoviePass beast. Now, the theater chains are all afraid of MoviePass, which is interesting, but we're going to keep an eye on this one for you because I have a feeling this is going to get even more disruptive. Now, while children in the U.S. may lose out on experiencing Jeffrey the Giraffe, it looks like European boys and girls will still be known as Toys R Us kids. Ireland-based Smythe's Toys has reached a deal to take over more than 90 Toys R Us stores in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. In March, Toys R Us said it would be liquidating its U.S. business. Now, the German branch said in a statement Saturday that Smythe's Toys has signed an agreement to take over its activities in the three countries with 93 stores and four online shops. Now, the toy store, which according to the statement operates 110 doors and online shops in Ireland and Britain, said it is confident of establishing and expanding its brand in continental Europe. Now, the deal does require approval by U.S. court and other authorities. It foresees Smythe's Toys taking over the U.S. Uh, over Toys R Us's regional employees and local headquarters in Cologne. If this happens... That's a really cool thing, because at least Toys R Us will survive, which means it does have the potential for making a U.S. comeback. Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? How do you build America's Good. largest wireless network? Can you hear me now? Good. By never being satisfied. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? AT&T, Verizon, and the GSMA, a mobile industry standard settings group, are allegedly being investigated for colluding to stop consumers from easily switching wireless carriers with devices that support eSIM technology. Now, there are six people with knowledge of the investigation that spoke to the New York Times. The Justice Department opened an investigation into the matter about five months ago, and we're only hearing about this now. The two telecom uh, giant companies control about 70% of all wireless subscriptions in the U.S. Now, just remember, there is in fact a reason why government organizations like the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, and the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, exist. To watch over greedy corporate types and ensuring that they don't control too much of the market and that they're charging a fair price for their services. Hopefully this shakes out and all AT&T and Verizon customers get a little bit of a rebate. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO of Hill Story Marketing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of The Daily Mix TV. Have a great day, guys. We'll catch you tomorrow.